Hi everyone, today we explore five common relationship mistakes that slowly destroy even the strongest partnership. These are things we've probably all done at some point, sadly, but the good news is they're totally fixable. Fixing it starts with knowing what they are, so let's get going. The first one is a big one, unresolved conflict. Around 22% of divorces in the U.S., are attributed to unresolved conflict or ongoing arguments. And this happens in every relationship. Maybe it's about who does the dishes or how you spend the money, but instead of addressing it, you just avoid it or you start talking about it, but don't finish. Sometimes you just give up in the middle of the argument for the sake of peace or because it's time to go to bed or something. However, the issue doesn't just disappear. It lingers, creating a low level of tension that eventually blows up again. Over time, it starts feeling like you're having the same arguments over and over again. The thing to remember is that what you fight about may not always be what you're really, truly fighting about. It's just the top of the iceberg and to resolve these ongoing repetitive issues, you need to go deeper to find out what this fight is an expression of. For example, you might be fighting over the dishes, but what you are really fighting about could be your need to be validated and appreciated, especially if you feel like you're always the one who does everything for the relationship even outside the kitchen. So, how do we avoid this? Start by tackling conflict early. Try to talk things out before they escalate. And remember, it's okay to take breaks if things get too heated. Just make sure you come back and finish the conversation. If you're already in a pattern of unresolved conflict, Try setting aside a specific time each week to talk things out calmly. Call it a relationship tune-up session or whatever, something to that effect. This routine will help you turn those old arguments into productive conversations that will shed a light on what really matters underneath all of it. However, you might have to do it in the front in front of a professional therapist because especially in the beginning you will need the um, impartial moderation of your conversations otherwise you guys will just fall into the same old patterns of he says that she says that or whatnot plus they the therapist can ask the questions that need to be asked to help you along they'll keep you accountable if you try to this by, to do this by yourself in the beginning you will not like it so you'll start finding excuses to skip a week and eventually one week turns into months and you probably won't go you won't get very far number two letting resentment build resentment is often described as a mix of disappointment anger and frustration. It occurs when a person feels wronged or treated unfairly, unappreciated, unrecognized for their efforts or their achievements, etc. in a relationship. This usually happens when little annoyances or disappointments stack up and when conflicts don't get resolved. But you don't say anything. You just keep your discontent to yourself. Over time, the build-up resentment creates a pretty big wall between you and your partner. And research shows that resentment is a significant predictor of marital dissatisfaction and often precedes separation. Yet, many people simply avoid talking about their feelings. Sometimes it's because they don't want to appear vulnerable. Other times it may be because of fear from some kind of retaliation or worry about being disliked, rejected, or abandoned. Individuals who struggle with low self-esteem might believe their feelings don't matter as much 
as their partner so that they don't have the right to complain. They may think, I should just let this go. It's not worth making a fuss over it, even when the issue is important to them. Sometimes people simply don't know how to articulate their feelings effectively. They might feel the frustration, but lack the language or the emotional tools to express it in a way that feels constructive. Some people believe that issues will resolve themselves if ignored long enough or that their feelings will naturally fade over time. This is a form of emotional procrastination where people hope that discomfort will disappear on its own. It kind of feels like that the first few times you think you let it go until something reoccurs too many times and you're kind of piling up on the previous resentment and disappointment and eventually building up in relationships where there's a perceived power imbalance, whether due to social status or income or one partner is more assertive than the other, one partner might feel it's safer to stay quiet. They may believe their opinions won't be valued or taken seriously. So to prevent resentment, you must practice expressing yourself when something's bothering you. It doesn't have to be a big confrontation every time. Sometimes even saying something like, hey, It bugged me when you did this can really help you clear the air or open the door to a conversation about resentment by saying to your partner, I think there are things we've both been holding on to. Let's discuss. Obviously, you have to pick the right time for a conversation like this or schedule one. You can't do it in the middle of a fight or in the middle of some kind of a disagreement or when you're already upset about something else. They may or may not want to uh, participate in your discussion. They may or may not want to walk through the door you just opened, but it's worth the try. Three, unrealistic expectations. People enter relationships with idealized expectations, hoping their partner will fulfill every need or make them feel happy all the time. The expectations we bring into our relationships often come from what we've observed and learned in childhood. People raised in households with a storybook romance portrayal of what relationships should look like, where certain roles were idealized, might subsequently believe that relationships should mirror those standards. Similarly, individuals whose parents were overly critical or had unattainable standards may internalize these as a baseline for their relationships. On top of that, again, media portrays relationships in movies and TV shows, also shows social media often depicts an idealized version of love that is passionate, flawless, and full of grand gestures. This can set an, a, a very unrealistic bar for what people expect from their own relationships. Also, people who have not developed a strong sense of self or who lack healthy, independent interests and social connections are way more likely to rely on their partner as their primary source of happiness. On the other hand, people with anxious or fearful avoidant attachment styles are more prone to unrealistic expectations around emotional availability and intimacy. They might believe that a partner should be endlessly understanding which stresses them out when real-life limitations naturally set in. It should be obvious and it is logical that no one partner can meet your every need. Cultivate friendships, hobbies, and individual pursuits to create a balanced support network and some self-sufficiency. Have an open discussion with your partner about mutual expectations. You can hash that out ahead of time. Or you can check in with each other periodically. 
adjusting your expectations to a more realistic level and appreciating your partner's unique strengths. It will really help you. Number four, neglecting emotional needs. Sadly, research shows that lack of emotional connection is a primary cause of infidelity and relationship dissatisfaction. Sometimes partners prioritize and focus on practical tasks like work and kids, finances, chores, and they forget to nurture their emotional connection. And this happens especially as people become more and more comfortable with each other and more and more settled into their routines. Some people struggle to identify or articulate their own emotional needs, let alone recognize and respond to their partners. It could be because they were raised in environments where emotions were not discussed or validated or worse yet, invalidated, or where expressing or even acknowledging emotions was seen as a weakness. So they carried out mindset into adulthood. People with avoidant attachment styles or those who are thought to be emotionally self-reliant often fail um, or fall into these categories. They may genuinely not notice when their partner is feeling neglected because they've learned to downplay emotional needs, including their own. So I keep talking about attachment styles. If you're not familiar with this, Check out this video and we continue chronic stress and depression also disconnect people from each other while people with unresolved trauma from significant emotional neglect or abuse in childhood may end up learning to suppress emotions as a survival mechanism which then leads to emotional unavailability in their relationships, making it challenging to fulfill their partner's emotional needs. So emotional intimacy requires vulnerability, which may feel threatening uh, to those who fear rejection or abandonment. They might avoid emotional closeness to protect themselves from potential pain or disappointment. Some misinterpret what it means to support a partner emotionally. They might believe that being physically present or helping with practical tasks like chores and errands is enough, failing to understand that their partner also needs empathy, deep conversation, and emotional presence. In other words, people may have just different emotional languages, you might be expressing yourself differently than what your partner needs to feel emotionally supported and loved. Some people believe that emotional needs are personal responsibility only and should be managed internally. And that's kind of true, but not all the time. They might think, I handle my emotions on my own, so my partner should do the same. Okay. True, most of the time, but being there for your partner in a moment of need deepens your connection. So emotional support becomes crucial, crucial in a healthy relationship. Make emotional check-ins part of your routine. Ask each other questions like, hey, how are you really feeling? What is going on with you? and show empathy for each other's challenges. Start making space for deeper conversations and expressing affection in ways that resonate with your partner. Finding a shared hobby or interest could also bring emotional closeness, taking road trips, working on projects together, or just sitting on the couch, watching a movie, or cuddling and talking about things that you guys care about. You have to make that time. And definitely, when one person is in distress, the other one hopefully has it within them to sit and listen and be present and behold their partner. Okay, how do you like this video so far? 
hit the thumbs up so I know you like it. Subscribe for more relationship advice from me and thank you in advance. Let's go to number five, not supporting each other's growth. Over time, people change and evolve and not always in the same direction. This one is easy to miss, but it often leads to a lot of resentment if not addressed. So supporting each other's dreams keeps the relationship dynamic and full of new energy. So if your partner's pursuing a new passion, cheer them on. Sometimes personal growth in one partner triggers feelings of insecurity or inadequacy in the other. If one partner begins to improve or evolve in significant ways, like let's say advancing in their career, exploring new interests, or focusing on self-improvement, the other may feel left behind or worry they will no longer be good enough. They might fear change because it might disrupt the established relationship dynamic and routines. They might question what the future would look like and feel anxious about it. People who prefer routine stability or have a low tolerance for uncertainty may react negatively to their partner's personal growth. They may view growth as a threat to their comfort zone. They might attempt to maintain the status quo by discouraging new pursuits or subtly expressing doubt about the partner's choices to prevent um, perceived disruptions to the relationship. If people have a strong competitive streak, or tie their self-worth to external achievements, um, they may feel threatened by their partner's success. They may begin to see their partner's growth as a personal loss rather than a shared gain. They may downplay their partner's achievements, refuse to celebrate milestones or even acknowledge them, or shift conversations to their own accomplishments as a way to regain a sense of balance or superiority. In codependent relationships, one partner relies on the other for emotional stability and validation. When this partner starts to grow, become more independent, or pursue individual interests, the codependent one feels threatened and might subconsciously sabotage the other's growth by maybe guilting them, demanding more attention, or creating situations where they feel needed. Partners may have different beliefs about what life and responsibilities should look like according to their particular cultural or familial expectations. So they may resist their partner's growth if it contradicts those ingrained beliefs. To fix or to minimize um, this type of a dynamic, one needs a shift in perspective. They need to view growth as a way to bring new energy into the relationship, it makes it more exciting. It helps to have open discussions about each other's goals and how you can support them. And these discussions should be ongoing and reoccurring every so often as circumstances change and people's priorities change and interests change so it's always a good idea to sit down and discuss where each one is and where each one wants to go and that way no one feels left behind uh, the partners can work together to explore ways to grow together uh, maybe trying new activities starting new projects, anything they can do as a couple, or maybe they're independent enough that that wouldn't be a problem. Which one of these mistakes do you think is the most challenging for you personally? Let me know in the comments. If you found this video helpful, give a thumbs up, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. Take care and I'll see you next time.